And time now for Football Night in McAllen. Welcome to McAllen, Texas, the city of Palms. And tonight, it's the McAllen Memorial Mustangs against the Edinburgh North Cougars. A couple of Valley heavyweights getting ready to tangle right here on Football Night in McAllen. It's coming your way next. Coming your way this year on MITV Channel 17. It's high school football at its finest. Join us for Football Night in McGowan, featuring all three high schools. The Nikki Rowe Warriors, the Memorial Mustangs, and the McGowan Bulldogs. They're all here on MITV's latest blockbuster, Football Night in McGowan. And welcome to McAllen Veterans Memorial Stadium. It's the Edinburgh North Cougars and the McAllen Memorial Mustangs. And it's coming to you from McAllen ISD Productions. Hope you enjoy it. Should be a really good game. We've got a couple of teams that can really light it up. Very strong offensive teams with strong running games that are going to go head-to-head -head tonight. Two of the finest running backs in the Valley going head-to-head -head tonight. So a real uh, heavyweight battle between these two. As we see the Memorial cheerleaders there. And... Uh, Everybody getting excited about tonight. It's a special Thursday night game, which means we can bring this to you live right here on the World Wide Web. So I hope you're catching us here on McAllenISD.org. And uh, we've got the game here for you, but we're just kicking off in just a few minutes. And um, should be really exciting. And I'm joined here now by Mario Reyna, my uh, partner in crime, as it were. And as you can see, we're up here in the press box. First time we've had the press box cam, so hello, and this is not as luxurious as it maybe sounds on uh, on uh, radio and stuff like that, but uh, this is where we make it happen, and uh, Mario, uh, what are the keys to the game tonight? Well, the keys to the game, everybody knows in the Valley about Trevor Spates running back for the Mustangs, and for, for that matter, everybody in the state, because he's an all-state running back, but a big key, sometimes we put a lot of emphasis on the defense, how do you stop him? But another key we put in is if the Edinburgh North offense, which is very balanced, can stay on the field, then how can Trevor Spades have a big game? So that's a big key. Another key we have is that we know the McKellum Mustangs, they like to score. They, they have the three games they played in, there's a lot of points being scored above 50. So we feel that if the Mustangs score, if this game is over 50 points, it favors the Mustangs and the Cougars like to keep it under 50. So, and we know that in the last three games, the Cougars have had real tight games. The last two, I think, all three games came to the last play of the game. Yeah, they they got three games all decided by a grand total of seven points. So the Cougars are certainly well versed in the uh, tight games, and the Mustangs scoring uh, what 46.3 points a game. They are just a high scoring, high octane offense. They've scored 20 touchdowns already. So, what do you who do you think is going to win tonight? Well, I think the, the team that's going to win is also we go back to turnovers. But another key factor that we bring up is that uh, we do know that Edinburgh North Cougars has a field goal kicker, number one, Diego Sanchez. And he's already had uh, the two wins they had, he kicked the game-winning field goals. So that could, if it comes down to a tight game, it could favor the Cougars. Yeah, the Cardiac Cougars uh, in the house tonight, and there you see them there. Number one there uh, is uh, Diego Sanchez. He is their kicker. We are watching him in pregame. He was booting it easily from 40 yards out with plenty of distance to clear that. There you see the Memorial Mustangs lined up as well. Let's go ahead and, and uh, well, actually, they're playing the alma mater, so we'll, we have a little bit of time before we get to the national anthem. Let's talk a little bit about uh, Trevor Spates, the running back for McAllen Memorial. Last year had nearly 2,300 yards rushing and 25 touchdowns. He was the All-Valley Player of the Year, and this year he's on a pace for even more. He's on a pace for 2,500 yards. He is the Valley's leading rusher at 766 yards, nine touchdowns. In only three games, he's averaging 10 and a half yards per carry. Here, let's take a look at this highlight package against Edinburgh Economides. Incredible numbers, Mark, and one of the things that he's already been in the conversation as the top five running backs in the history of the Rio Grande Valley. He has an opportunity, if he stays healthy, to maybe uh, break the record of the all-time rushing, and it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 
maybe 7,500 yards as a career. So Trevor Spates is a real deal, returning All-Stater and highly recruited all over the nation. Yeah, he's already uh, given a verbal commitment to the University of Arizona, but um, you know that could still change. He's only a junior. Uh, meanwhile, Edinburgh North has some weapons of their own. Let's talk about uh, number eight, their running back, Matt Whitesides. He's a senior this year. He had an incredible year last year as well, the District 35A MVP last year. He had 1,600 yards. 1,600 yards rushing for him and 17 touchdowns in 2013. This year he's got 340 yards rushing and 5.1 yards per carry. Only one touchdown though as uh, the team likes to put it up in the air. He's a real deal, there's no doubt. Number eight, Matt Whitesides, the real deal. He is predicted by the Campbell Magazine as the MVP, offensive MVP in 6A. But uh, he's really a good guy, but he also has other weapons. Martin Rodriguez, quarterback, is a returning uh, quarterback and he does a good job on that and they also have a receiver Michael Cantu who's their leading receiver and he's already caught 13 passes for about 313 yards so they do have a three-headed monster on that side on the offensive side for Edinburgh North and they have a big guy I think you yeah. and I were talking about him and that's uh, yeah, Yaman Gonzalez, a 300-pounder. He is going to be playing a left guard tonight, and uh, he is a force to be reckoned with for that Edinburgh North wrecking crew. Meanwhile, let's take a look at the standings here for District 36A, which is where Memorial is competing this year. And, of course, it's a new district, and it uh, consists of the three McAllen teams, Mission, and the three La Jolla schools. La Jolla Palmview doing pretty well. Mackay and McAllen Memorial all 2-1. and one. And then you can see Mission Row and La Jolla 1-2. and two. La Jolla Juarez Lincoln in there at 0 and 3. These are all non-district games. Uh, teams will start district next week, so that makes uh, tonight's game even more important, doesn't it, Mario? Yeah, correct. You want to go into that week. It's all, all coaches will tell you, even at the professional level, at the college level, that every coach, the week before district play or conference play begins, that those that is the most important game of the year because they want to make sure they're coming in on a positive. What so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming. Very well done. Vanessa Jinks, a, a senior at McAllen Memorial in the choir under the direction of Mr. Omar Samaniego over there at uh, McAllen Memorial. Wonderful job on the national anthem. And, of course, tonight, just a moment away from kickoff now, Edinburgh North against McAllen Memorial. Both teams at 2-1 and one. tonight. The last tune-up of non-district action before all, both of them hit district play starting next week. And if we take a look at once one more time at McAllen Memorial's, uh, let's look at their... The scores are pretty high, Mark. That's yeah, there's sure. the scores that. right there. And, uh, yeah, look at the scoring. Uh, 28, 69, and 42 scored by McAllen Memorial, averaging 46 points a game. Uh, the only question mark right now is the defense. You can see they have given up a lot. And that's why it's one of the keys to our game, Mark. If the defense on the Memorial side, they've struggled. And Edinburgh North has a balanced offense. So do they stay on the field and shoot up the clock, which means Trevor Spates and offense will be off the field. So... That could be a big factor at the end of the game. Yeah, you could see uh, Edinburgh North uh, winning their first two out of the gate before they uh, suffered a setback last week against Ed Couch Elsa, which has moved up to Class 5A this year. A one-point loss against the Yellow Jackets. Here come the Mustangs, and here come the Cougars. The Cougars are going to be wearing their white jerseys with the gold helmets and the gold pants. You can see the Mustangs got their their blue and blue. They got the uh, the sky blue and the navy blue on tonight. 
and both teams excited to play. This will be a real good game, a real good measuring stick for both of these teams as both of them are expected to get back into the playoffs this year. Uh, both teams going into the playoffs last year. Memorial ended up at 6-5. and five. Uh, Edinburgh North went to the third round last year. They ended up at 11-2. and two. There we see Trevor Spates, who is, uh, as we said, 766 yards and nine touchdowns through only three games so if, far this season. If Trevor's on pace and keeping up his 250 yards per game, he might hit the 1,000 yard mark today. So uh, he's just a fantastic guy. And the temperature here, Mark, I've never been the weatherman, but let me see how it can do this. Temperature at game time, 88 degrees. The winds out of the southeast at 26 miles per hour. And the forecast, of course, in the Rio Grande Valley is sunny and partly cloudy. Yeah, that means the wind is blowing as you look at the screen from right to left. So it will be in the faces of the Mustangs in this first quarter and then again in the third quarter. But the Mustangs will have the wind in the fourth quarter. And you can see there uh, Edinburgh North. Coming out, school that opened in 1992. They were the second high school in Edinburgh after decades and decades of just Edinburgh High. And uh, Memorial was the second high school in McAllen. Uh, they opened up in 1980 as a high school. Well, we, know, as we saw the uniform for the Edinburgh North, one of the rare teams that actually has the last names of every player on their jersey. And what a nice looking helmet, that golden helmet. How can you mm -hmm. go? wrong with a gold helmet yeah and and their fight song is the uh, the, the same theme as uh, Notre Dame you University of Notre Dame's fighting Diego Irish Sanchez. and uh, and why not they have the gold helmets there so the Cougars are gonna kick off that's Diego Sanchez ready to kick off you saw Trevor Spates is back to receive Spates has had 108 kick return yards this season and this is gonna go over the heads and out of play look like uh, attempting to field it was Michael Grace Remember and last time Michael Grace had like a, he doesn't get to carry the ball a lot, but he had like a 75-yard run. And look where the ball ended up. As uh, Grace tipped it, it went out of bounds inside the one-yard line. Mark if it had gone into the end zone just a few inches Mark further, it would have been a touchback out to the 20. And let's talk about the strategy the Cougars coach Rene Sainz used. They won the coin flip, and they decided to defer. So they gave the ball to McKellar Memorial here. I don't know if there's a little lack of respect or something, but we'll see how that plays out. Edinburgh North wanting the ball for the start of the second half. And look at this. The ball ends up inside the one-yard line. You don't see that very often, but you know what? Trevor Spates, back He's in the season one. opener against Sherryland, had a 99-yard run, the longest ever in high school history. Let's see if he does it again here. Toss to the left side. Bounces through at the 5. And up close to the 10-yard line. Looks like he might even have a first down. And that's, and that's what Trevor does, Mark. He's got tremendous vision. That's something I've seen him grow over this last two years is that in, as a freshman, he would grab the ball and usually take off where he was told. Now he's very patient, and he's always looking for the holes as he did in that first play. Yeah, they credit uh, Spates with eight yards on that carry. So second down and two. Triple Y for McCall Memorial. They're going to toss this right now. This is Spates again. Dodges a tackler in the backfield. Big hole at the 20. Now the 30. He's taking off at the 40. And he's going to turn it on. And he's going to score. The second play of the game. And Spates takes it 88 yards to the house. Mark, that's something that I just talked about. That if you win the coin toss, why do you want to kick it off to McCall Memorial? And forever space and maybe that's something that coach Sainz who was the defensive coordinator for the Cougars last year something that he's trying to give his defense a little confidence but uh, that strategy certainly did not work out here early on within the first minute of the game and how about that actually let me credit then the 91 yards on the the toss and he gets also all 99 yards in two plays two runs by space eight yards and 91 yards for the touchdown, just 52 seconds into the game. Jesus Flores' extra point is good, and with 11.08 to play in the first quarter, it's Memorial 7, Edinburgh North nothing. Let's take another look at this fantastic run, the 10th touchdown of the year for Spades. Great blocking on the right side, and there was another block by right there that I missed, number 10, that occupied a defensive player, and pretty much that you can't give Trevor Spades that much opening because you know what he's going to do. Let's give credit to Fabian Pedraza who uh, also rotates at quarterback. Yeah, Pedraza, the quarterback, throwing a the block there. That helps bring Spades. He Spades a little bit winded there after a 91-yard sprint. Can't blame him. 
But if it had been me, I'd still be running right now. But uh, Spade's a little bit faster, and he's put his team up 7-0. Uh, they make it look so simple as uh, that's what right there. Enjoying the moment, but uh, Memorial made it look so easy. That offense is really clicking. And, and you know, the Edinburg North team does have good defense. They I sure know do. The first two plays are not indicative of that, but uh, Edinburgh North came into this game with a pretty strong defense. In fact, defense was their strong point last year. Their head coach, uh, Renee, Gar Gar Renee Sines, yeah, he was the defensive coordinator last year. Mark, they do have a great player on defense, and that's Joey Benitez, who's a returning all-stater that had a lot of interceptions last year. I do believe he had 11. And that's a lot of interceptions in high school football. He has one already this year. Here's the kickoff by Flores. High and short fielded at the 19. This is going to be run up ahead. This is white side, by the way, up about the 25 to about the 27-yard line. Good return there for Edinburgh North. So what we can expect from the Edinburgh North offense, well balanced, coming into this game, averaging about 175 yards per game on the ground and about 150 yards in the air. A very well balanced. And what they'll do, Edinburgh North offense, they'll try to take advantage of what they, what is working for them. You can see uh, there they have a really big offensive line as Coach Bill Littleton in his 11th year at Memorial looks on from the sideline. Edmund North their first possession. Martin Rodriguez, the quarterback in the shotgun. He's got white side there in the pistol. Put a man in motion, they hand off to him coming to the left side. Has some room, cuts inside, and gets out to about the 35-yard line. Nice little run there for number 22, Michael Cantu. And Michael Cantu is a very versatile offensive player. You take a look at the starting lineup. Yeah, we see uh, Rodriguez White sides. You're going to hear his name called a lot. Salazar, they'll go to some as well. And then uh, Michael Cantu is technically a receiver, but you saw he ran at that time. And Yamane Gonzalez, uh, number 68, also someone to keep an eye on, the big offensive lineman they have. Back to action. It is a second down and two, and the handoff white side's hit in the backfield, but picks up a first down anyway, and fights his way up to about the 40-yard line before he's brought down by Trey Black Guetta, the linebacker. Let's take a look at the Mustang defense now. And you can see there on the defensive line, uh, Velasco, uh, Ricky Miner is only a sophomore, but has played well, one of the top tacklers on the team. And then uh, the massive Robert Gonzalez, who was on the offensive line last year. Then uh, Lucas Rios, the middle linebacker, is their leading tackler, Ozzy Salazar, the cornerback, and John McGee at the rover position. Uh, that's kind of the strong safety position. Uh, two of the top players in the secondary. So a first down there for Edinburgh North. Rodriguez tosses outside right. This is Cantu once again, and Cantu fights his way up to about the 44, but there is a flag down. And Michael Cantu already has two Michael running Cantu plays. <laughs> Very versatile young man, Michael Cantu, comes into this game as we have a holding on the Cougars. But Michael Cantu comes into this game averaging 100 yards of receiving yardage. So he is the go-to guy, but so far he's been carrying the ball. And this is... It penalty on the North Cougars and that's a holding which really is not what you want to have here in your first possession. These are the kind of penalties that coaches are hoping that by the fourth game of the year those those penalties have been ironed out. Yeah so that makes a first and 20 and negates a nice little run there by Cantu. Rodriguez out of the shotgun again. Senior quarterback is going to run this time. He doesn't get much. Basically back to the line of scrimmage before he's brought down by a couple of defenders, including in their number eight, Paul Zuniga. Paul Zuniga. Good pressure by the defense for the Mustangs. Did not give Rodriguez a lot of time to pass, and the defense and secondary did a good job. Rodriguez decided to run, but didn't have much. Actually lost a yard, a second and 21. Only two down linemen for the Mustangs on this passing down. Rodriguez wanting to throw. Here comes a blitz. And they're going to get Rodriguez. They had a delayed blitz, and they're able to get Rodriguez in the backfield. It's going to be third and forever. And you're right, Mark. You already highlighted sophomore Ricky Miner did a good job. He's not going to get credit for the tackle on this play, but he's the reason that Rodriguez tried to run. And then we have Lucas Rios on the tackle, along with number 54, I do believe, and that's Jesus Islas. Okay, third and 24 now, and Rodriguez is going to air it out deep, and it's overthrown. 
and that'll be bring up a punting down. It was intended for number 11, Angel Baron, the junior receiver, but there is another flag down. This flag is way away from the play, and we'll see what this is. Offsides on Memorial. Well, actually, that last play, because of that, was a free play. But uh, you're looking at the North offense. They're not afraid to throw, and they're also not afraid to throw vertical. And by that, I mean they're not afraid to go for big open passes down the field. They're not the typical spread offenses that like to throw short passes. So to bring up third and 19 following the five-yard walk-off. 8.37 to play first quarter. Memorial 7. Cougars nothing. Down two in motion. Rodriguez on third and long. Going to throw it deep to the right side, and there's no one there. Looks like he was trying to hit Cantu, but Cantu had pulled his route up a little short. We see Ozzy Salazar, the Mustangs, number 22, is providing coverage there. And that will bring up a punting down. Salazar might stay out there because he is one of the punt returners. And pretty much any time we talked about when you have an offensive holding penalty, it puts your team on a hold. And we saw Coach Marcus Kaufman right there. You can tell that he wants the ball, Mark. So the Mustangs put on a token rush. Here's the punt going toward the sideline. Over Salazar's head, but he picks it up on the first bounce. And Salazar fights his way up to the about the 26-yard line. 8-19 to go here in the first quarter. Last time the Mustangs had it, they had uh, just two plays. Went 99 yards, Trevor Spades both times, including 91 yards for the touchdown on just the second play of the game. Uh, quite impressive. We'll have the highlight for you in case you missed it. And hope you're enjoying this game. Coming to you on the World Wide Web on McAllenISD.org. UIL rules normally forbid uh, showing live coverage, but that only applies to Friday night. Thursday night, you can show it, so... Bonus coverage here. Out of the triple I. Pedraza wants to throw deep. Man is open and incomplete. Incomplete intended for DJ Johnson, the junior receiver. Making no excuses for DJ Johnson. But I do believe this is the first game he's playing, Mark. I think he's been out because he had a problem with the legs. But uh, maybe a little rustiness there. But this is pretty dangerous, Mark, because you take a look at the offensive starters for Yeah, Boston. Pedraza, uh, a junior uh, starting in their quarterback for the second year. And of course, Spates, you know all about him. Aaron Vitter, yeah, we haven't heard from him yet, but uh, we will tonight. And you can see the offensive line there, pretty hefty at 251. Here's Spates again at the 30, and then it's upended. Almost lost the ball, but holds on to it at the 34. And the tackle there by 32, Joey Benitez. And we'll go finish off the offensive starters there, the offensive line, uh, an experienced offensive line of four seniors and a junior, and you can see how heavy they are. Uh, bit, some big guys there, and they average 251 pounds per man. Uh, Mark, so the Mustangs have it on second and short. A third and two, big play for the Edward North defense. Triple I once again, and here's Spates. Big hole, first down at the 40. And then he's brought down at the 45. A nice little burst of 11 yards there for Spates, who's already well over 100 yards at 118 on just four carries. Here's the defensive starters. Defensive starters there for Edinburgh North. And we mentioned uh, Joey Benitez there at the bottom, number 32, uh, one of their stellar players. And a couple of other good ones are uh, on the defensive line, Sebastian Bulos, who is only a sophomore. Okay, 7.05 to go. Here's a handoff. This is Vidrial, his first carry across midfield into Cougar territory at about the 46. And that's what happens when everybody's keen in on Trevor Spates. Pretty much the element of surprise given to Vidrial, and he gets a quick eight yards on his own. Well, Mark, in the last couple of plays where Trevor ran, it was good blocking. It's not only Trevor Spates. He's got a great offensive line, and he also has the ability. Uh, they had him in the backfield, and they couldn't bring him down. So he's just a tough customer all the way around. What a nightmare for defensive coordinators. Yeah, I mean, you know he's going to get the ball, but it's still tough to stop him. 6.27 to go. Here's a bit of an end around, and this is going to pick up a first down at the 40 and hit spins up to about the 35-yard line. Brought down by uh, Joey Benitez. Who was that on the carry? 
I know I don't know who was having a carry, but I gotta give credit to number 74, Edward Pecanio, who put on a tremendous block to make sure there was an opening there. And that was number 40, and that is Michael Grace. Michael Grace, who had yeah. that big carry for 75 yards at, against Economides. Yeah, Michael Grace uh, looking graceful on that run. Picks nice. up another first down, and we're halfway through the first quarter. Hand off to the fullback, Villarreal, at the 30. Big hole again, up to the 26. And boy, this uh, Mustang offensive line just tearing big holes for these uh, Mustang running backs. It's right like the chess game, Mark, for Coach Marcus Kaufman. Everybody keying in on Trevor, and you give up that quick burst up the middle, and that's what Memorial Football is all about, Mark, is using all your weapons. You key in on Trevor. He doesn't get credit for that carry, but unofficially he gets an assist. Trevor Spates dotting the eye. Villarreal fullback. Roll out for Pedraza. And this is tipped and incomplete. Intended for the uh, tight end, Adrian De La, De La Torre. And it's incomplete. And De La Torre was open, but a good defensive play. Yeah, that's one of the things is uh, when you have a good running game, it really opens up the play action for you, which the Mustangs tried there. We take a look at some of the Mustang fans. Memorial up 7-0, 5.22 to go first quarter. Third down and one here. Pedraza under center this time. Hands us off to the short back, and they pick up the first down easily. A nice little uh, burst there for Will Moore, the senior running back. A nice job by center Anthony Esparza and Teddy Garcia. Dumping open a hole to the left side. That's a big gain of six, another first down. And so far, the Mustang offense is doing what it does best. 152 yards on the ground, and we're seven minutes into the game. Now we got a power eye left, toss left. This is Spates, has some room at the 20, cuts inside, and the hit goes down at the 14-yard line. Good open field tackle there by Edinburgh North Hector Garza, their middle linebacker. Quick pitch to the left. Good job on the left side, Edward Pequeño and Teddy Garcia. And on the defense, if you know they're doing a good job, Mark, is that they're having contact at the line of scrimmage on running backs. Anytime you're hitting your running backs four or five yards deep, you know who's controlling the line of scrimmage. And so far, it's a Mustang offensive line. Second down and three. They have a wing right. They hand this off to Villarreal. Big hole at the 10 at the five. Hit and touchdown. Aaron Villarreal flips over. And it looks like he's in the end zone, but no signal yet. He may be just short. Mark, we got to give him a touchdown for that. He earned it. I mean, he fell on his back. At least an A for effort or something, but they're going to spot him uh, well inside the one-yard line. So we not quite a touchdown. We but need a replay here, Mark. Let's get a replay and see what the booth thinks about that. See how our officials are doing. All in fun, of course. Not easy being an official. He flipped. That looked like, that looked like when he fell, he was in the end zone. Uh, his hand did touch there inside the one. Here's Vidrial again. And why not? Poetic justice, Vittery out of the touchdown, and the Mustangs have their second touchdown of the evening. They're up 13 to nothing, 3.53 to go here in the first quarter. You can see the uh, Mustang JROTC with the flags there on the sideline. The Mustangs excited. Two touchdowns in two link to the field drives. And that offensive line, Mark, I know Trevor Spades and the rest of the offensive unit get a lot of credit, but that offensive line is doing a tremendous job. Yeah, 10 plays, 74 yards, an extra point up and good by Jesus Flores and Memorial now 14. Edinburgh North nothing, 3.53 to go in the first quarter. This guy's going to be ready. Those kids doing those push-ups for every point for the ROTC group. They better be ready because they're going to be doing a lot of push-ups tonight. There's the replay once again. We see uh, Vitriol burst into the end zone for his third touchdown of the season. Great blocking there by uh, the Mustangs, their guards, uh, Chris Bosca and Teddy Garcia, and then the center, Anthony Esparza. Let's take a break. The Mustangs 14, the Cougars nothing. You're watching Football Night in McGowan right here on MITV. Quality teaching. It's what we have in abundance in McAllen ISD. In fact, district teachers have earned 19 regional or state teacher of the year titles in the past 23 years. A record second to none. Want the best for your child? Call 618-6000. And welcome back to McAllen Veterans Memorial Stadium. It's football night at McAllen. The McAllen Memorial Mustangs 
and the Edinburgh North Cougars, both teams 2-1 and one this year in this non-district action. And so far it's the Mustangs up 14 to nothing. Here's Edinburgh North on the return. This is Whitesides, and he's not going to be able to get anywhere. Goes up to the 23-yard line. Looks like several Mustangs were there, including uh, 25, Joey Delgado. Joey Delgado doing a good job of maintaining his position. Mark, a couple of shout-outs to athletic director for the Edinburgh Independent School District, which is Roy Garza, who used to coach, was a head coach at Edinburgh North, and to Joe Filoteo, who's enjoying his retirement, was an AD over there in Edinburgh, and also to Poppy Rodriguez, former AD here in McAllen. I spotted him somewhere in the stands out there enjoying the football game. There you saw Aaron Vedrian resting on the sideline, and this is why. There's his first run. This looked like a TD, but they uh, spotted him just inside the one. And now we are back to live action, a pass, and this is tipped in incomplete. Terrific coverage there by the Mustang cornerback, Joey Gutierrez. If you want to be a defensive back, Dick, this is how you play that position. Joey Gutierrez doing a good job of being right there. Look at the replay. Had, it, had him covered like a blanket there as they were trying to hit Cantu down the left sideline. So second down and 10 for Edinburgh North. And uh, quarterback is going to keep it is Rodriguez. Mustangs aren't cool. They bring him down. Uh, Sam Hinojosa, the linebacker, the first one to get there. Also in there was Trey Guetta, number one. And Mark, when you have a good offense like Memorial Mustangs, it's, it just not adds to their offense. It brings a lot of pressure to the other offense because now you start thinking, we don't get first downs. They're going to get back on the field. And, you know, so it, it puts a lot of pressure on the Edinburgh North offense coach, Rene Sainz, with a look of concern. In his first year as head coach of the Cougars. And Rodriguez rolling out to the right side. This pass is high and incomplete. Coverage by John McGee. And it looks like it was intended for the Cougar receiver, Ubaldo Pequeño. And the Cougars will be forced to punt for the second time on their two possessions. Cougars not afraid to use the passing attack. They have been successful, but right now they're just missing and they need a big play and so far they haven't gotten the big play. I think they're averaging 150 yards passing per game so they are a team with a, a pretty good uh, passing game but unable to get on track here tonight. In to punt the football. Caught by Salazar at the 35. Now has some room. Up to the 40 and now the 41. So about an 11-yard return there for Salazar and the Mustangs who have scored touchdowns of drives of 99 yards and 74 yards now have it 69 yards away. And I'm sure so far defensive coordinator for the Mustangs, Moses Patterson, is happy about things and he's probably even a little bit happier because he actually played football at Edinburgh North. We've got a new uh, quarterback in there for the Mustangs. That's going to be number seven, Jonathan Sanchez. And this is not unusual. Uh, Pedraza and Sanchez will alternate at that quarterback spot. As Sanchez tries to run this, he's hit at the line of scrimmage and then surges forward for a couple. Of course, Jonathan Sanchez was the starting quarterback last year. And he brings a different dimension. He's more of a runner. Has had a lot of success running the ball. There you see the defensive tackle, number 50, Sebastian Bulos. One of the top defenders for this North team. Sanchez, again there at quarterback. He is a junior, just like Pedraza. And this over here is DJ Delamantes, who fights his way up to the 48-yard line. Gain of five and bring a third down. Is the leading receiver for the Mustangs. They try to short pass to see if he could have put on a move in open field. Was not able to do that. Good job by the defense for the Cougars, and that brings up a third and three situation. And when you have Trevor Spates averaging 10 yards per carry, it just makes it very difficult. Yeah, a bit of a no-brainer there. 144 and ticking here in the first quarter. Mustangs up 14-0. Third and three, still in their territory. Sanchez handed off. This is a short back. It's uh, at the 40, still going, and upended at the 32-yard line. Ball did come out, but I think the officials are going to rule he was down. And he picks up the first down. Nice little run there by Will Moore. And that's an easy call by the officials because we all know, football fans know, that 
you, the ground cannot cause a fumble, but once again, that left side of the Mustang offense, on that left side, they're having a lot of success with Teddy Garcia, Edward Pequeño, Center Anthony, Gordon Sparza. We might as well mention the other two young men, Carlos Del Bosque and Ronnie Sparza, doing a tremendous job. Yeah, good run there by Moore. Picked up uh, 18 yards on third and three. Sanchez wanting to throw down the sideline. It's caught! Touchdown! Bill Moore for the Mustangs! And the Mustangs have struck once again. They now lead it 20 to nothing. What a perfect pass by Jonathan Sanchez right on the money. And a good job by Will Moore. Sometimes those are the catches that are most difficult to catch when, it, when you're in the open. But Will Moore, the son of two-time school board president Richard Moore. And I saw Richard Moore earlier watching from the stand, so I know he's a proud papa right now, and his son Will Moore catching that uh, on the go route there down the left sideline. Now here's the extra point try. Talamantes is the holder, Flores the kicker, and it's good. And Flores now three for three on extra point tries here in the first quarter. Memorial 21, Edinburgh North nothing with 102 still to play in the opening frame. And here's the that play again, Sanchez going back to throw. And you know, Moore had a little bit of a step, but that was a pretty tough throw. He had to lay that just over the defender. Actually, Mark, that's DJ Talamantes. Oh, I'm sorry, you're right, DJ Talamantes with the catch. But let's take a break. You're watching football night in McGowan right here on MITV. And there you see uh, G.J. Talamantes. My apologies there as we misread the, uh, we're so excited, misread who caught the touchdown pass. But Talamantes, the receiver, he's a senior this year, weighs only 150 pounds. So he caught that pass for his second touchdown of the year. Here's the kickoff return now for Enberg North up across the 30 to about the 35, and that's Whitesides. Whitesides we haven't heard much from as far as uh, the offense goes, but he has been present here on the kick returns. We see him go off the field. Mark, getting back to T DJ Talamantes, what an excellent catch, but Mark, this is game three, and we forgive you for that. You know, it's just still preseason for us. We'll get it by next week. But if the Mustangs continue to develop all elements of their offense, a little bit of passing here, you got Trevor, you're safe, your safety ball. I mean, this offense is just gonna be very difficult to stop as you take a look at some of the Mustang players on the sideline having some fun. Last minute of the first quarter, Whiteside nowhere to go. And it looks like he's going to lose a yard as uh, the linebacker, number 42, Sam Hinojosa, gets back there. Hinojosa on that tackle, Mark. And I, I, I can assure you that the Mustang defense is so far also just as impressive as the offense. The defensive linemen are doing a good job of maintaining their blocks and actually having some penetration. And that's what's making it very hard for Whitesides and company. And you can see Hinojosa wrapping him up by the ankles to bring him down. This should be the last play of the quarter. Under 20 seconds to go here in the first. Snap to Rodriguez in the gun. Throw to the near sideline. This is caught. And up to about the 39-yard line will bring up third down. It's a catch by 25, Justin Guetta. And he was brought down by the cornerback, Joey Gutierrez. So we've reached the end of one quarter of play. And after one, it's been all Mustangs. The Memorial Mustangs, 21. Edinburgh North Cougars, nothing. We'll take a break. Be back for the second quarter in just a moment. You're watching Football Night in McAllen right here on MITV. McAllen ISD offers plenty of choice when it comes to choosing a path to your future. A new track being offered this year is called the Computer Science Academy. This two-year program is for students who are serious in pursuing the computer field. Courses are taken at STC. Students graduate from high school with an associate's degree in hand, and it's all free. Students will be prepared for careers in software, engineering, systems analyst, among others. At McAllen ISD, if you want a computer science career, you choose your course of study. And we're back, ready to start the second quarter. Cougars facing a third and five situation. They had only 14 total yards of offense in that first quarter. Eight rushing and six passing. Third down and five. Rodriguez has time, big hole, gonna run for it. 
and looks like he's going to be just short as he fights his way up to about the 44-yard line. He needed the 45, and so a bit of a decision here for Edinburgh North. I would have to say, Mark, down 21 to nothing. It'll be a fourth and one. I would assume that Rene Sainz has to do something to try to get a little momentum because so far they have been outplayed big time and it looks like they are going for it mark yeah and another thing too it is a non-district game so why not let your team uh face a little adversity so fourth down and one they hand it off to Whiteside, has the first down and fights his way up to about the 50 yard line before he's brought down by the defensive tackle ricky minor so picks up six yards on fourth and one only a sophomore ricky minors doing a very good job of maintaining his block and a good hustle play right there as white sides refuse to go down and it's a first and ten something positive for the north offense at their own 50 yard line just their second first down of the game white side or rather rodriguez back to throw going to throw this and it's incomplete and a collision between a couple of players there michael garza number 20 there for mccallum memorial colliding with the Cougar, Justin Guetta. They need to check Justin Guetta because it could have been an unintentional helmet to helmet hit as we take a look at the replay. He was in an awkward position, but uh, good news is he got up and uh, walked off the field. Looks, looks to be okay. So second down and 10. Right at midfield for Edinburgh North. They're moving left to right. Play action fake. Rodriguez looks to his right. And now going to throw deep left. He's got a receiver down there. It's underthrown, and it looks like it's caught. Caught at the 19-yard line. Terrific play there by Ubaldo Pequeño, number 21. And Pequeño made this happen because actually there was good coverage on that play by the defense. Gain of 31 yards on this pass completion. Ball was actually underthrown, and Pequeño did a good job to come. And that's exactly what the Cougar offense needs or needed. Got a big play as they fake to white sides and Rodriguez to keep it and up to about the 14 yard line. A pick up of seven on uh, first down there before he was brought down by McCallum Memorial's Jesus Istas. Gonna give him credit for five yards. Edinburgh North up to just 23 yards on the ground so far team that came in averaging 171. So we were on second down and short. They're going to lob this up for the right side of the end zone, and it's incomplete. He's trying to hit uh, Ubaldo Pequeño. Pequeño was right there on that defensive play, doing a good job. Looked like the ball was up in the air for a long time, gave Pequeño an opportunity to play the ball. There were some Cougars that were hoping they'd get a pass interference on that one, but the officials did not help them out. Okay, third down and five. Rodriguez in the gun. He's looking to his right, nothing there. Now he's gonna throw it over the middle and look like he might have been throwing that one away. That's it's incomplete. From up here, Mark, you can see some of the receivers were open, but it is very different when you're actually on the field and now with a fourth and five it's look, it looks like they will go for a field goal try to put some points on the board get something positive the worst thing that could happen there on fourth and five they don't score and they lose some momentum so good call here by coach signs he's got diego sanchez on his side going for a 31 yard field goal to get balls, on the board yeah balls right in the middle con the holder kick is blocked mccallan blocks it and now the ball's loose. Doesn't matter who picks it up. It'll be Memorial Football. And the Mustangs block the 31-yard field goal attempt by Edinburgh North. And that goose egg stays up on the board. And things just continue to go bad here for the Cougars early on. The down 21-0 is important for them to score and get some points. Something positive on their side. And now they're still down 21-0. And let's see what defensive coordinator for the Cougars, see what kind of adjustments they've done on the sidelines.
Okay, we'll continue now. Get a bit of a difficulty, but we'll, we'll come back to you and we'll describe the game for you as a quarterback rolls out. And this is Pedraza back in there trying to turn the corner on the left side. Is forced out of bounds near the 30-yard line. So for the Mustangs, that will bring up second down and 10. A lefty quarterback was looking for his receivers and did a good job. Didn't spot anybody. Decided to at least get some positive yards out of this. And he got at least three yards in that play. And Pedraza showing a little bit of speed there. Yeah, Mustangs up to 192 yards rushing in this game. They've scored on all three of their possessions. This is their fourth possession following a blocked field goal. So they're second down and seven. They'll hand this off to Spates, throwing right. Big hole at the 40. First down, 45. One man has a hold of him and pulls him down. Spates may have been gone. One defender pulled him down, but he's in Edinburgh North Territory at the 45-yard line. It's a pickup of 23 yards for Trevor Spates. The referees are talking to each other. I think we have a penalty on this play. But Joey Benitez, if it wasn't for Joey Benitez, Trevor Spates would have gone into the end zone on another big yard. And I think we've got the uh, screen back on there. Uh, thank you for standing by. That's what happens in live I television. Uh, it's in live web. Uh, anything can happen. And by the way, speaking of anything, a penalty just wiped out the 23-yard run by Spades, and they're going to bring this back. Well, that last play, even though we had a penalty mark, the quickness of Trevor Spades hitting the hole. I don't know there's too many running backs in high school football that can hit the hole as fast as Trevor Spates does. Just a five-yard penalty, but it brings it all the way back to the 27-yard line. Spates again, picks up most of it back, hit at the 40 and across the 45 to near midfield. Picks up the first down. Once again, looks like a carbon copy of the previous, previous play. And they'll move the chains once more with 9.07 to play here in the second quarter. Another element in the Trevor Spates running attack is that when he knows somebody's in front of him and he pretty much has to keep going forward, he has no problems trying to run over you. Mustang's up to 211 yards rushing now. Most of that from that man on the right side of your screen, including a 91-yard burst in the first quarter, the second play of the game. 21 nothing Memorial. I think the Mustangs want to call timeout. Pedraza signals for time. So the Mustangs take timeout with 8.39 to play here in the second quarter. Let's go ahead and take a break. Take a quick break. Be back in a moment. You're watching Football Night at McAllen right here on MITV. In just one year, our students earned so many college credit hours that it saved our families millions in college tuition. It's not just about getting ready to enter college tomorrow. Our advanced programs put students in college in our classrooms today. And Mustangs taking that last time out, 8.39 to go here before halftime. And that's good, that shows, uh, you know, Pedraza just a junior, but that shows some good coaching there. He saw something he didn't like, and he uh, had the presence of mind to take the time out. And a good play there by Pedraza. That's a good observation, Mark. A lot of players will panic and just run it anyway, but here's Pedraza. He's going to throw. Left-handed quarterback, and he hits Sanchez, the other quarterback, and Sanchez breaks a tackle, gets his way into Cougar territory inside the 40-yard line, and another first down there for the Mustangs. And Sanchez showing his versatility. Not only did he throw a touchdown pass last time the Mustangs had the ball, but uh, this one refused to go down, and he was not going to get the first down. But that second effort, yards after catch, the YAC stats, gets him a first down. Cheerleaders keeping the spirits up. 15-yard pick up there and a first down. Now in Cougar territory, Madraza throws, this time to the right side, and this is caught by Rocha, his first catch of the night. Pick up of about five yards up to the Edinburgh 35-yard line. Mark, uh, maybe some people, football fans, are thinking, if you have Trevor Space in the backfield, why isn't coach, uh, offensive coordinator Marcus Coffin just, you know, pitching out to Space? But you got to open up your whole playbook that way it makes it tough on the opponents that are coming and scouting the Mustangs. Interesting formation. They got trips right. Going to hand it off to Spates running right. Not much room there as he crosses the 35 and a pickup of only one. 
and that's the only way you can stop okay, Travis Bates right, right, if your defensive right, linemen right, are doing a good job of penetrating and not a and contact right at the line of scrimmage is what's important in trying to stop any running back. So Mustangs now facing a third and they have it listed as third and five, maybe four and a half actually, but seven and a half to go. They're going to throw this quick out to the left. That's Telemontes, and Telemontes dances his way forward. Looks like he has the first down as he's up to about the 27-yard line. He needed the 29 and gets his way up to the 27. Seven-yard pickup there for the Mustangs on third down. Mustangs, by the way, four for four on third downs in this game. And it doesn't matter which Mustang is catching the ball. They're fighting for the extra yards. Sanchez did it in the previous play, and Talamantes did it on that play. Triple I right, tossed to Spates, running to the right side, and he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Good job of defense there by Edinburgh North. Good job right there by Brendan Garza. But that's the only way you can stop Trevor Spates. You've got to do it as a team, team tackling, control the line of scrimmage, hit him right at the line of scrimmage, because once you get on open field, you know what he's going to do, especially when he goes outside the hash marks. And, again, and once again, this game coming to you live on McKellenISD.org, live on the World Wide Web. Here we go to Spates. And Spates hands off is again a short gain, just yeah, one yard. That'll bring up third down and long. Our coverage, by the way, brought to you in high definition. So I hope you're enjoying that. Mark, that's three consecutive plays where the Edward North Cougar defense did an outstanding job controlling the line of scrimmage. And they're much, I mean, it doesn't matter what kind of running back you are. If the defense does that, nobody's going to get yards. Yeah, Mustangs are four for five or four for four on third down, but this is their deepest hole they've been in, third down and nine. A bit of an uncomfortable situation. They toss Spates left side as he gets across to about the 17-yard line. He's going to be well short of the first down. Or excuse me, the 23-yard uh, line. Gain of three on the play. With a fourth and about six yards to go, the Mustangs are going to try to give their field will give for an opportunity to gain some confidence. You never know later on down the road where you're going to need a big extra kick. So we have Jesus Flores. Yeah, by the way, this is be Jesus Flores' first field goal attempt this season. This from 39 yards. And here it is, up and long enough, and it's good. Terrific kick there by Jesus Flores, the senior kicker. Comes in and First one from 39 yards out, and the Mustangs increase their lead to 24 to nothing over Edinburgh North. You see Flotus getting congratulated there on the sideline. Mustang JROTC is excited about that. They've got the Mustang flags there. 5.08 to go before halftime, and Memorial has now scored on all four of their possessions, and they lead it 24 nothing. And Mark, even though the Cougar defense gave up three points, what a big moral victory for them because they did have three or four plays in a row where they actually did not allow Trevor Space to get more than five yards. So excellent defensive uh, defensive work by the Cougars in that last possession, even though they gave up three points. There's some signs there that maybe they made some adjustments so they can make it a more difficult uh, night for Trevor Space. We're in the second quarter, and it's 24-0, 5.08 to go before halftime. The half has kind of motored along because uh, both these teams like to keep it on the ground as we take a look at white sides for Enberg North back to receive. He's already returned several kickoffs here this evening. By the way, the kickoff there by 48 Rafael Juarez, his first try at that. And this ball's going to go into the end zone for a touchback. So what a leg there from Juarez, who is a uh, sophomore. And he might be the heir apparent for Jesus Flores. So Edinburgh North will get the ball at their own 20-yard uh, line, or excuse me, the 25-yard line, with 5.08 to go before halftime. They changed that rule a couple of years ago. They now bring the touchbacks out to the 25 following a kickoff, or touchback on a kickoff. Edinburgh North has all three of their timeouts. Just over five minutes, we take a look at the Mustang cheerleaders who have been under the direction of Mr. Uh, Pedro Ramirez, who's been their coach forever. 
numerous championships won by the uh, Mustang cheerleaders. And there's Whiteside. Hurdles a defender, but he goes down after a gain of only two. Under five minutes to go here in the first half. Ball City got John McGee in on that last tackle of Myatt Whitesides. So second down and eight here for Edinburgh North. They'll go with two receivers left and one to the near side. On a pistol formation, Rodriguez is back there and with Whitesides. Fakes it to Whitesides. Rolls out to his left. Throws an incomplete intended for Tito Salazar. Coverage there provided by the linebacker, Trey Getup, number one. And Mark, any time the Cougars have an incomplete pass, that kind of plays into the Mustang offense because that stops the clock. It's almost like a timeout. And they've had quite a number of passes that have gone incomplete, which means at times the clock is not running like it does on a running plate. You don't want to give the ball back with a lot of time back to the Mustang offense. Edinburgh North 0 for 4 on third down. Mustangs will rush 4. Rodriguez to throw. Flushed out. Now chased. Trying to turn that corner and he does. Picks up the first down. Big block there on Lucas Rios. And then Rodriguez, the quarterback, gets up to about the 47th yard line. A pickup of about 20 yards there on third and long. And I think that's a big play. Big play by Martin Rodriguez who avoided a couple of tacklers as he does speed to go outside so there was a nice block right there by number 21 Ubaldo Pequeño. Here's Rodriguez going to give it to Whitesides crosses midfield in the Mustang territory bounces out like a pinball but then gets up to about the 47 yard line before he's brought down by Rios and a couple of teammates. And in the last possession, a big first down for Martin Rodriguez because that keeps the Edinburgh North offense on the field with about three minutes and 35 seconds to go. They don't want to give the ball back to the Mustangs. Also in there on the play was Michael Garza with Rios. Nice wrap up there by Garza. Oh, we've got a timeout on the field right now with second and five to go. So officials take a timeout. 3.35 to go here before halftime, and we'll take a break. Mustangs 24, Edinburgh North nothing. You're watching Football Night in McAllen right here on McAllen's ITV. Students in McAllen ISD are taking courses that prepare them for careers. In fact, the class of 2014 earned 1,300 professional licenses and certifications. We offer students 16 different choices through our career technical education program, all free. And here we are back. You can see uh, Coach Bill Littleton. Let's see if we can hear some of this uh, chatter here on the sidelines. Littleton talks to his defense. And there we see the Kathy Middle School Cobras and the Brown Dobermans. Uh, Kathy on the left and Brown on the right. And those are the middle school football teams from the feeder schools. These kids will be the future Mustangs. And they're here watching tonight in the north end zone. So congratulations and uh, good luck in their seasons to the Kathy Cobras and the Brown Dobermans. I think affectionately known as the Dobies, aren't they? Right, and this year, Mark, the McAllen schools are actually playing the La Jolla schools in the middle school schedule. I snap it, Rodriguez has it on second and five, and then pass to the left is incomplete, and looked like it was intended for Justin Getup. Coverage on the Mustangs provided by John McGee. I know we've given a lot of credit to the Mustang offense, and so they deserve it, but the Memorial defense has shown a lot of improvement, Mark. That's coming up a third down and five. Edinburgh North hasn't done well on third, but the last third down they had it uh, three plays ago, they did convert. They produced a 20-yard run by the quarterback, Rodriguez. Let's see what they can do here. 3.13 to go before halftime. North has all three of their timeouts. Rodriguez play action, throws over the middle. Man is open, caught at the 30. First down for the Cougars and down to the 27-yard line. Trey Guetta on the tackle, but a nice catch there for a first down by Angel Baron, a junior receiver. And Martin Rodriguez is showing why he's the quarterback. Good arm. Steps and throws right in between the numbers. 
gain of 19 on the pass of completion will be a cougar first down. Ball the on the Mustang 27. Okay, yeah, it's a pickup of 18 yards on third down and five. So first down, 245 to go. And Rodriguez throws over the middle. Man is under double coverage, but it's caught, and it's a touchdown. Touchdown for the Cougars, Michael Cantu. And the Cougars are on the board for the first time tonight. Michael Cantu came into this game averaging 100 yards per game. As their leading receiver came in with 13 receptions and three touchdowns. So that is Michael Cantu, fourth touchdown of the season. Another good pass by Martin Rodriguez. And that's what helps a team that's behind. You have to have a passing attack to get yourself back into the game. Cantu caught the touchdown is also the holder. Diego Sanchez in there to kick the extra point. There's the kick up and it is good. And the score with 240 to play in the second quarter. Memorial still on top, 24 to 7. Here's another look at the touchdown. And on this touchdown, Mark. Give credit to the offensive line, giving Rodriguez enough time and letting the, the post run by Cantu enough time. Good pass, good catch. And Cantu with his fourth touchdown catch of the season. We'll take a break. You're watching Football Night in McAllen right here on MITV. In college credit, McAllen ISD leads the way. Plus scholarships that save time and money. More than a thousand professional licenses or certifications. Nearly 100 associate's degrees. In McAllen, students can live anywhere and enroll here. We're looking at McAllen Veterans Memorial Stadium. And you can see the Edinburgh North fans there uh, at the top of your screen. And there's the Memorial sideline there. Martin is 24-7. Cougars needed something positive. Going for that first down on a fourth down was a big play. But unfortunately for the Cougars, there's still two minutes and 40 seconds. And when you have number 21 who's back to receive this kickoff, it is always very dangerous. That scoring drive for the Cougars, seven plays, 75 yards. Cantu with a 28-yard touchdown catch from Martin Rodriguez. And here's the kickoff by Diego Sanchez. It's going to be fielded by uh, uh, at the seven-yard line. This is run back across the 20, now the 30, and fighting his way up to about the 33-yard line. A nice return there for, uh, looked like Fabian Pedraza, the quarterback, or excuse me, it's Michael Grace, Michael number Grace. 40, on the return. And Michael Grace is now on the kickoff return team. And he probably earned some playing time, Mark, because of the last game against Economides, when the score was out of hand, he went in there and had a big 70-plus yard run. Mustangs have scored on all four of their possessions in this half. Three touchdowns and a field goal. See what they can do here with 2.32 to play, two timeouts. They hand off to Spates, and Spates is upended short of the line of scrimmage, it looks like. He'll lose one yard. And the North defense, the last four or five runs by Trevor Spades has made it very difficult. And it's all about the defense gaining some penetration. That was number 50, Sebastian Bolos. Yeah, Bolos, a good play there to fight off his block and hit Spades before Spades had a chance to get into the open field. So second down, 11. We're under two minutes now. Pistol formation. Sanchez now the quarterback. Sanchez wants to keep it. And across the 40 has the first down. Loses the football. And looks like Edinburgh North may have it. Edinburgh North's Joey Benitez looks like he fell on the loose ball. And now a ch another chance here for Edinburgh North with a minute 48 to go before halftime. And a big positive play by Sanchez who did a good job. Had a big first down already. Trying to get some extra yards in open field. And a good job by actually it was Benitez who cost the fumble and also recovered the fumble and that's why he was an all-stater last year and I'm sure he's an all-state candidate against this year predicted to be the MVP in their district defense first turnover of the evening Edinburgh North with all three of their timeouts play action fake and now they're gonna throw it over the middle it's intercepted Edinburgh uh, Matt McCallum Memorial coming right back with it and this is Michael Garza with his second interception of the season 
and the Mustangs have it right back. So no harm, no foul there as the Mustangs end up with the football again. Everything was looking pretty good, and since Rodriguez was hot with the passing, slightly overthrown ball. And good job by Michael Garza. So it cost the Mustangs seven yards in ten seconds. They get the ball back thanks to that man right here, Michael Garza, the senior safety. And here's Pedrasek, quarterback, flushed out of the pocket. Being chased, gonna run, jumps across midfield to about the 49 yard line. Looks like it might be enough for a first down. Good decision by Pedraza, didn't find anybody open. Found the opening to the right side and scramble. And we gotta give a, I think we'll give a credit to the tackle there to the AstroTurf because I think his foot got caught. Yeah, he did. So credit the AstroTurf for a tackle on that one, Mark. Mm. 10 yard pickup for Pedraza. Clock running at a minute 13. Mustangs with two timeouts. Traza has time. Throw left sideline and incomplete. Had uh, Talamantes, number four, in the area, uh, along with uh, 81, DJ Johnson. That kind of went in between both of them. So this will bring up second down and 10. That stops the clock with a minute six to go before halftime. Mustangs up 24 to seven. Take a look at the Edinburgh North sideline. Pedrasa will be in the pistol once again with Spates to his left. Two receivers left and two to the right. They'll hand this off. Spates at the middle. Follows a little block. Has room. First down. Now at the 30. One man to beat. At the 20. And he's going to score. Trevor Spates, his second touchdown of the night. And the Mustangs now lead it 30 to 7 with 56 seconds left. And Spates putting on a show here this evening for the Mustangs. And Mark, that's a good call on your play, Colin. But when you said one man to beat, it's pretty much almost impossible for anybody downfield to make a tackle on Trevor Spates, especially if he wants to run the ball for at least 15 to 20 yards. He's too fast, too quick, and it's almost an impossible task for anybody to bring him down. And the extra point looks like it's good. Yeah, Jesus Flores now is uh, four for four on his extra points. We'll take another look at this touchdown. His Mustangs now lead it 31 to seven. Nice uh, lead block there by 74, Edward Pequeño. And then Spates was able to turn it on. Had one man to beat there at the 10 yard line. You could see how he kind of paused, anticipating the attempted tackle, and then was able to ride through that and get his second touchdown of the night. We'll take a break. You're watching Football Night in McGowan right here on MITV. Mustangs well ahead. There we go, Trevor Spates, uh, probably over 200 yards rushing tonight. As a team, the Mustangs are at 290 here in the first half. They came into tonight averaging a colossal 417 yards rushing per game. They are well ahead of that pace tonight. Did you see who he sits next to, Mark? All his offensive linemen showing his appreciation. It's interesting how we've taken a look at Trevor on the sidelines, like he's, looked, like he's tired, but he certainly forgets how tired he is when he's running on the field. And here's the kickoff once again by Rafael Juarez, the sophomore, and this is another deep one back to the three yard line. Cantu has it for Enberg North across the 20, weaves his way up to the 30, now the 40. The two men chasing at the 50, he's still going, breaks the tackle, he's gonna take it all the way. Cantu's gonna score his second touchdown, and we're gonna have two TDs here in the last minute. Cantu takes it the length of the field. 43 seconds left here in the half. And hold everything. Contu took it, 97 yards for a touchdown. He may have stepped out of bounds. I was looking for a flag as officials were kind of talking at midfield, never saw a flag, but I think the officials ruled that Contu did step out of bounds at the Cougar 48 yard line. Boy, just when you think things are going well for the Cougars, they seem to, everything that's Supposed to go bad is going bad. What a tremendous run on that one, Mark. 
Those electric finders are running we've seen all year. Yeah, 97 yards on that kick return. Still goes down as a 45-yard kick return. But Edinburgh North, with all three of their timeouts, going to throw this to the left side, a short pass. It's caught well short of the first down by J Justin Guetta. And I think Edinburgh North forced to use one of their timeouts. So the Cougars call a timeout with 33 seconds to go. And that'll leave them with two. 31 to seven is our score. The Mustangs have scored five times on six possessions. We'll take a look at the replay of that scintillating run by Michael Cantu. You can see him over there on the far sideline. Might have stepped out of bounds right about there. Or right there maybe. And uh, there you can see he evaded the last two defenders, then rode the tightrope. And you can see the cheerleaders there behind him getting all excited. Zedberg North thought they had their second TD, but ended up stepping out of bounds 52 yards further back. You, got, you can see they got some big offensive linemen there, number 78, Garcia, and then 68, uh, Gonzalez. It is a young team too, Mark. They lost a lot of seniors in that team that went to the third round. Actually, how many did they have coming back, Mark? Yeah, just three starters overall coming back for 22 positions and four new starters on their offensive line this year. So a team that went three rounds deep last year. Yeah, a lot of new faces out there. 33 seconds to go before halftime. Play action pass. And Rodriguez steps up in the pocket. Throws over the middle, incomplete. It was intended for Cantu. And I think that'll bring up, that'll bring up third down. So it's gonna bring up third down and six. And that's what happens when you have a young team on offense, Mark. They're, they can't be inconsistent. There has been several plays on a passing attack that the receivers have been open but the, there's a little inconsistency they haven't been able once they get to with white sides in the backfield and the passing attack they, they're going to be tough in district play and here it looks like they're trying to set up a middle screen they get it to Cantu but Mustang smoke it out and Cantu is going to be brought down short of the first down a gain of only two it'll bring up fourth down and four 18 seconds left the clock is stopped for a moment so I think uh, North may have called a timeout here and Edinburgh North has had success with that play in previous games, Mark, but it's a well-scouted play by the defense. That's the only way you can execute plays like that. Those are the type that that's why you see film. And they were waiting for that play. Nobody was fooled. Good job of defensive execution by the Mustang defense. So it's fourth down and five they have up there. And the Cougars have called timeout. And this, so far, I know it's only one half, but easily the Mustangs' best defensive performance of the season so far. And they are doing a good job because uh, the Cougars' offense they have been doing a decent job all year of putting points on the board, but it has been a very good, I think, the best defensive performance so far of this young season for the Mustang defense. So they're still well out of field goal range. They're at the Mustang 47-yard line, fourth down and five. Cougars with 18 seconds left. They have one timeout. Rodriguez throws it over the middle. Receiver fell down. Receiver had fallen down as intended for get it. It's incomplete. And they will turn it over to the Mustangs on downs. 12 seconds left. We'll see if the Mustangs maybe uh, toss it to Spates, you think, and see if he, if he gets a big gainer, then call timeout. All Spates needs is one second. But who knows, maybe Coach Kaufman will try a couple of bombs into the end zone. Or we'll see what he's thinking. So the Mustangs take over at their own 47. 12 seconds left. They do have two timeouts. They lead it 31 to 7. Enberg North will rush three, and they do hand it off to Spates. Spates bounces outside, dodges a tackler at the 50, now spins his way up to about the 45 in Cougar territory. A flag is down. So to bring up second down and two pending the flag.
and it's a penalty against the Mustangs as Spates comes off the field. And Mustangs have taken a timeout with four seconds left. Mustangs use their second timeout. Four seconds to play. And not sure what they'll do here. I would imagine with a 31-7 lead, you would just take a knee. But I you never think know. they're probably just going to have some kind of handoff to see what happens. Because uh, Coach Littleton up 31-7. You can never say that it's already halftime and you're trying to run up the score when it's halftime, but... I believe that penalty was a holding against the Mustangs. They moved it back 10 yards. So on first and 17, four seconds left. Pedraza will air it out left side and incomplete intended for Johnson. And they're trying to hit Johnson on the uh, kind of a dough pattern down the left side, but it's incomplete and we are at halftime. So some fireworks there in the first half, especially from the Mustang side, as the Mustangs lead it 31 to 7 at halftime. We'll take a break. We'll be back with more here on Football Night in McAllen, right here on MITV.